On today's episode of Locked On Suns, we've played a variety of different preview games this week. What are we panicked and unbothered about? What are our strongest takes for the upcoming season today? What are the headlines going to be? What are the stories around this team going to be? We'll break down at least 5, 10 on today's episode. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past six seasons, a writer at suns.com, and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen to close out the week. Happy Friday to everybody. All you got to do to get the show in your feed every day, well, at least starting in September, is search Locked On Suns wherever you get podcasts. We're free and available everywhere, including YouTube. Nearly 6,000 subscribers over there. So join this community. Become an everyday or get locked onto the Suns each and every day just by hitting that button wherever you listen or watch. Aaron Edwards is here as he is every week to close out the week. And we're going to play yet another game. It is August. That is what this time of year is for. But... Um, it's going to be the headline. So it could be good. It could be bad. It's not even a prediction of if the headline might actually make sense or be right, but it's just, we know how this stuff works. We know, uh, how the NBA content goes. And so we're going to dip our toes in from that side of things today. And I will start us off, Aaron, and I'm going to go positive right from the jump because I don't want to, I don't want to get into the craziness too soon. I think there will be a stretch of this season where, the dominant storyline about the Phoenix Suns is just, can anybody beat them? Like, I really think we are going to have at least a month or so, maybe two weeks, whatever it is, where the Suns just rip off a bunch of wins in a row. The offense clicks and looks awesome. And there's a whole conversation about, is this the favorite to win the NBA championship? Is this the best team in the NBA? Maybe it's longer than that. Maybe it's the whole season. Maybe people feel <laughs> like it's already going to be that. But... I'll at least be able to, I'll say for now, I'll commit to the fact that it will happen at some point. And I think it'll probably be the right thing, the right take at that time, because I expect that they're going to be capable of that. Yeah, I like that one, <laughs> especially since I'm probably going to go the other way. And um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I think that, I mean, not you're here, but I think that like, yeah, I, I said it the last show, I was like, what if we rip off like a stretch of like eight or nine in a row, like, especially in the stretch that we need to like that February after all-star break, like March area where we kind of are going to have to do something like that. If we get hot at the right time or we get hot before Christmas or something, we'll have a couple games under our belt. I could see people have been like, Oh, they figured it out a lot faster than they thought. And they know who the point guard is. They know Aiden knows who he is. I have a thing on that one too. So I'm sitting on myself earlier. <laughs> and I think like if this all clicks and people know their jobs immediately with a new coach, because they're going to know their jobs from the beginning. It's not like they're coming into a team that's kind of established and like it's so many new people. They're all learning their new jobs right now. So I think that's yeah. going to help them click faster because they're all learning together. So yeah, I can see them ripping it off because it's not like book is like, I'm book. Like this is my team. Yada, yada, yada. And Katie's like, I did this last year. It's a new coach. It's new players. It's yeah. new everything. So they're all going to be learning what their new thing is going to be at the same time with each other. Yeah, that, that all is part of where I'm coming from. We did talk about, you know, there's some chunks of December and January, especially where they're at home for a while and there's some rest built in there and whatnot. I don't know if it's exactly going to be that stretch or not based on the schedule or if it's just they just win. I mean, they can beat anybody. They don't need a cushy part of the schedule to, to do that, but it would help, obviously. I, I think the other part to me, though, is, and, and this is something I'm, finally kind of like ready to to come out with i guess in this show and in the just basketball show as we get closer to preview season uh is just i think the west is not going to be great this year i mean i think it'll be bunched up as we've talked about but maybe bunched up with more wins like lower in the 40s yeah. than even last year i just i look at the warriors have a lot of questions offensively i would say the lakers have health questions every year the Grizzlies have the jaw thing. 
The Kings, I'm not sure if they'll keep it up. The Clippers, it's like they already have all the health questions all the time, but now their supporting cast is suddenly very old. Like they've gotten rid of some of the guys that, that you used to get excited about or those guys didn't quite pan out and the Batums and everybody, Morris, are just older and not as effective anymore. Like I just look at the West and I think it's going to be there for the taking and I think the Suns are going to be up to it. So that, that contributes to it a lot for me too. But uh, what is your uh, first prediction of a 2024 Suns headline? Um, just because I know how the NBA works, if we lose like one of those early games to somebody bad, it's like, are they overrated? Like, that's just mm. one of the headlines that probably people already have in the drafts, even <laughs> like we yeah. lose to like uh, just a terrible like I forget who our first games are, but or the uh, like the Spurs. We lose to the, yeah, yeah. Or the, the Spurs Jazz, games like, right away. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we lose to like the Jazz or something like they're nipping, like ready to just draw that headline up because it's just it's gonna get clicked so i just see that we lose one game while we're still learning each other and we lose one of those bad teams and it just doesn't like look like it's clicking because they just met each other sort of it's gonna be are the suns overrated pretty quickly and i can just like it's gonna happen i already know it's gonna happen and i know we're gonna probably lose a game we shouldn't and it's gonna be immediately the first thing on first day <laughs> to me that's a perfect example of the point i've been trying to drive home even though it's kind of like hypothetical right now is i just feel like that's what this that's what being a big story in the nba feels like right like yeah the suns have been that but they've always sort of been this like fairy tale story and then it was kind of like there was just this built-in questioning and doubting because it felt too good to be true and and obviously then the the mav series and everything it, it they've never really come into a year where it's like they're a force to be reckoned with. And like that has its pluses because you're on national TV and people are watching your team and it's fun to be a Suns fan and all that stuff. But it also comes with like, they are, they being like, yeah, Stephen A. Smith or you know, whatever it is. It, it, it is the team that gets looked at first and foremost to poke a hole in. And some fan bases are used to that. I'm not sure if Suns fans are. Yeah. I mean, like as much as Lakers uh, fans complain, like they get it regardless like even when Kobe was on those bad teams like they still have to deal with it this is going to yeah. be like the first time where we're kind of and even if we do like yeah like they might be like if we hit a stretch where we win a couple in a row I think it wouldn't even be that positive I think it'll be like yeah you guys should have done that like you guys yeah. are supposed to do that and I don't think it's going to be praise more or less like yeah this is what you guys should be doing so I don't know when the praise will come it'll probably be after a big game against like Denver or something but I think that given that it's us, the praise is going to be like few and far between. It's going to be one of those seasons, I feel like, where the only games that like matter in that way, like a big narrative way, are like Denver, Golden State, the Lakers, and then like yeah. the Celtics and the Bucks. But any other win, it's going to be like, well, yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> you know, like that, that's yeah. what you're supposed to do. You took care of business, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm fascinated. I think that the schedule, as we kind of talked about, is it's decent enough at the front end where they should be able to get on track early. And I believe in everybody's ability to kind of sacrifice and just approach it the right way. I, I'm not really worried about that, but I'm more just from a basketball standpoint, there is going to be an adjustment. Even if they're willing to do it, does it happen easily? I'm not sure, but... Um, I, I think they can weather that storm and kind of just cruise and hopefully the storyline that i predicted comes before the one you predicted so that things can can start off on the right foot but uh i have one that kind of segues right off of of the overrated side of things aaron so we'll, we'll i'll bounce my negative one off of you after a word from FanDuel. football season is kicking off in no time and there's no better place to bet on the NFL, even college football, but especially the NFL on Dan FanDuel, and they're giving you the chance to win all season long. Right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and get bonus bets for every victory. I've told you my strategy on this one before. You want a team in a weak division, pile up regular season wins, but good value for the Super Bowl. You don't want the favorite for the Super Bowl because, you know, you still want to have a chance to actually win the bet. You're not just doing it for the bonus bets, but it's that sweet spot. You can turn around, use those bonus bets to bet on the spread, player prop, over, under, and more each and every 
Sunday, although really Thursday, Sunday, Monday, all of it, you know, the, you know the drill. Don't bet on the Cardinals. I'll tell you that. I wish I could throw them in here, but uh, there's not going to be a lot of those bonus bets coming your way if you bet on the Arizona Cardinals, even though the Super Bowl odds probably might look pretty delicious. You know that's not <laughs> happening, so you don't, uh, you don't have to hear it from me. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, I will start us off here again in segment number two, Aaron. We are giving our storyline, headline predictions for the 23-24 Suns season. And mine is that I think inevitably, whether it is out of the uh, you know mouth of Charles Barkley or any number of other people, if the Suns are as good as we think they can be, if they have a strong regular season and appear to be one of the favorites to win it all, did Kevin Durant pick the easy way out will again be a, co- a topic of conversation. We're headed there. I, it's exactly like your thing. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it it's necessary to do it, but it is 2023. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know, people cannot help themselves with this stuff. And especially when it relates to KD, it's just, it's just cake. It's just, it's candy. It's, 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 you know, content, just gold there's no way around it we're headed there i think for sure yeah that's an easy one just because and i'm fine with it because that means kd tweets and i like when kd like gets to (laughs) argue with fans online so yeah like we gotta get kd a blue sky code i think we gotta (laughs) get him over there because i'm not sure if twitter's gonna get him the like the real bang for his buck that he's wanting anymore he's gotta (laughs) he's gotta spread out and duplicate efforts i think but you're right yeah, like, I think, yeah, like, it's going to be on, like, TNT or something, and KD's going to be like, okay, Charles, or okay, Chuck, and, like, it's just going to be a whole thing where KD just argues with 12-year-olds, and I'm fine with that. Like, when KD gets to just be one of us and fight online, I'll take it. We have him to do it with us now, but yeah, it's easy. Like, that's just the one that they like to go to, and it's probably going to be some games where it's it's Book's team. We're pretty sure that that's Book's team. So the bus driver thing is going to come up again. And I think he's just going to be more annoyed, but funny with it. And I'm just prepared for it to happen regardless. (laughs) I do. uh, We talked about this when the trade happened. I remember we did a segment on like Barkley was pumping them up, but at the same time, disrespecting Duran and like, obviously Barkley's allegedly supposed to be our guy here in the Valley, but he kind (laughs) of isn't sometimes. And like what the whole dynamic there was going to be. The Suns didn't end up making a deep enough run for a lot of that to matter in a huge way but uh this year i think it will and i uh i i think he is at a place where it doesn't matter to him um like maybe in his heart of hearts like i'm not gonna pretend like he's reached some sort of like he's uh you know the buddha or something and he he's just like above all of it but at the same time i i think like he seems to have found ways to just roll with the punches on that stuff and just understand that like there's always asterisks to different things in that you accomplish in sports. There's always great players teaming up. He's not unique in any way. I think the defensiveness at least is gone for him, even if obviously it probably doesn't feel great to have everybody constantly trying to poke holes in your resume and what you are as a as a person, let alone like your 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 kind of achievements in your profession. But I also wanted to throw this one out there because I've I, I know it's just KD stands being KD stands, but there's somehow this uh, this trend in the YouTube comments on this show all of a sudden of me not respecting this dude enough, which I just think is hilarious <laughs> because all they, last summer. Yeah, I was going to say the 4th of July weekend, were they not listening? <laughs> I mean, no, because they all started following on February 8th or whatever it was, we and they don't know uh, who I am. <laughs> but no, like it's funny because all the Suns fans who were diehard, you know, ride or die Phoenix people that just told me to shut up all summer. I was thinking about it today. I'm like, August content is rough, but last year we just had the Durant story to go through the whole entire time. So I'm like, it has been a while since I've had to uh, really get creative this time of year. And a lot of it's because I wouldn't stop talking about how much Durant would be a good thing for this team last year. So uh, I don't hate Kevin Durant. I literally have a Brooklyn Nets Kevin Durant shirt hanging in my closet that I bought before I ever even knew the dude would want to be a son. I'm I'm I am one of you. Please stop yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I always thought that KD stands are like the more chiller versions because they like you kind of adapt like the your superstar favorite player and he's like laid back but funny and kind of like. Yeah, but yeah. He, like he'll he'll still talk trash, and it's not like the KD st- or the LeBron stance where they adapted him. Like they are just straight into like 
this is us, like, this is goat talk, like, all of it, like, they're way more aggressive. And, yeah, so, like, I've never had beef with KD stands, and especially as for not showing him respect. We did nothing but that for a whole summer. And begged him it's to like, come to the stands. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Uh, maybe they saw the jersey hanging behind me, and they think I, like, regret the trade or something, which I don't. I I, I don't know. Um, they're just being goofy. It's fine. They, they will uh, – if you hit follow and subscribe and become an everyday or you will learn that I worship the dude. I think he's like the a top five player in the league, maybe still like I literally did a show about that a week ago. So I don't know, but it's all right. Um, what is your next prediction? Are, are you going positive? Do you have something to change us I'm up here? Positive. We're in the we're in the ranty venti part of this. Maybe I'm going positive this and okay. people are going to think I'm drinking the Kool-Aid and they're going to be so shocked. I'm saying this, <laughs> but <laughs> DeAndre Ayton all star. <laughs> Wow, we had this is the second <laughs> time in one week we've had that take on the show. Uh, <laughs> I give me the like, case. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying like he will. I'm saying it's possible. I'm saying that the first half of the season, if he's getting the looks that we think he's gonna look, and if he's like as engaged as he sounds like he's gonna be, just being aggressive, dunking on people, like making the shots that he's getting, getting fouled, like all of that stuff, and rebounding. If he's doing that. And people are going to be like my other one was about just the trade deadline stuff with him. But I think that if he is playing like that and getting the looks that he's going to look, I can see him like getting kind of those votes going. And I can see the fans getting behind him because he's they seem pretty behind him right now. And I think once he shows us, if he can show us and if he is like what he said, if he's really going to follow through on that, then, yeah, I can see people start give, giving him that buzz. Because there aren't really that many great centers in our in the West anyway. Yeah, and that's the thing we talked about too uh, early in the week when Brandon kind of brought this up as a possibility is that the front court is still a thing. Like the the positional stuff still exists for the All Star game, which is yeah. weird because it matters way NBA. less than All yeah. NBA. But for some reason we kept it for that and not for All NBA. I don't know. But regardless, if you just go through it. Um, some there are the wild cards. I think each conference has two wild cards, which can be any position. I think it's uh, is it two? No, it's three front court starters, and then I think it's like two front court reserves and two wild cards. So that's kind of all the slots that he could get. I would expect most of the time the wild cards are going to go to guards and wings. But uh, that said, the guys who made it last year in that kind of position group generally, you're looking at um zion technically durant although he was in the east when he actually got voted in markinen you have uh demontis sabonis you have jaron jackson jr all good players but you know not locks and yeah. like towns and gobert those guys have been on all-star teams in the past i think they would have to have a really really great season for them to get consideration and to not cancel each other out honestly um so, yeah, I think it's there. I think a lot of it's just going to be narrative based, though, because like numbers wise, he's not going to have a case. He's going to have yeah. to make it the way that like Marc Gasol used to make make it or like yeah. Gobert, you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking earlier. I was like, what's the best case? Like 12 and 10 average and that'll get him in like 15 and 10. Like if he can pull that off, like he's not going to get the looks that he wants to look. But if he's consistent in that, just if we can with the players we have on the court, if we can get like 16 and 10 or 16 and nine from Aiden, I would be fine with that. I'm not sure. Give him all-star, but I would be fine if that's the player that he was willing to turn into for us. Sure. What did you think of him saying uh, that the Bahamas group was like his favorite set of teammates that he's been around? Was that just um, like feeling good about things? I didn't yeah. have a problem with it, but obviously it got a lot of chatter online. Yeah, it's summertime, and it's not, like, the same amount of pressure. So, yeah, I would probably – it's just, like, hanging out with your friends during the summer and getting to play in another country. I'm sure that was dope. Yeah, and, and obviously there's a certain amount of pride if they're if they're able to actually pull this off. You know, it's yeah. – um, be. I think they've made it before, but it was a long, long time ago, decades ago, and obviously none of the current players have, have participated in that. And uh, I think the other part that I haven't seen a lot of people mention, it might just be because I'm not – plugged in right now listening to other people's content too much but um tum tum nairn the guy who's like their starting point guard he was on the staff here Aiton's rookie year and so like he was in a like a video guy he was really close with the two-way players he he had a good relationship with melton uh that season but i'm sure Aiton knew him i mean why of course he did so i think that could be an element of it that helps too of just like 
people he knows, people he's comfortable with, uh, an opportunity that's new for him, a coach that he doesn't have a history with, and, and all that stuff. I, it wouldn't surprise me, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, Team USA guys come off of that experience and talk yeah. it up, so what's different about it? You know, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Team USA guys like it so much that they decide to get traded for each other or to each exactly. other. Like, I think that we've, we're probably more egregious over here with having fun over there. Yeah. All right. So Buddy Hill's going to be a son is what Aaron is saying. And we will, uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Let's pivot to two final storylines. Maybe we'll rapid fire a few more off. I will start us off again with something related to DeAndre Ayton after one more break. Closing out the show, I will get the ball rolling on the my my last prediction as far as a headline goes, Aaron, which is I think that there will be, and this is more about Matt Ishbia than it is about Aiton, and it's about the fact that Aiton is the last piece to be traded. But I brought this up with uh, Michael Schwartz from ESPN earlier in the week too, and and I'm 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 feeling like it will happen the more that I think about it, which is that there will just be. Matt Ishby is going to get antsy. And so I think I'll let you pick which one you think it'll be. Is it either rumors about a DeAndre Ayton trade or rumors about a change in the front office? And both of these would have to be that the Suns start slow. So if they don't start slow, then I don't think that this necessarily happens at all. But I just don't think Matt Ishby is going to be able to sit tight. So which of those sounds more realistic to you? I wasn't even going to let you get to the second one because it's the first one. <laughs> I think it's been the first one for the last two years now. Um, we didn't extend them. Uh, we didn't give, like, I think that all of that stuff is just going to be every year now. I, it's pretty much our CJ McCollum. <laughs> like, that's the best way I can put it. Like when CJ got extended, well, they didn't have like bad blood, but I think every year after that, it was like, they're not going to make the leap with him and he they could probably get some first for him or a decent player. And I think for like two years, CJ McCollum was just like trade conversation at every deadline because they just knew the Blazers weren't going to be able to do it with him and Dame. And I can just see that's how it's going to line up for us. It, or I should have just said Collins. Like that's the same thing. pretty much. Same thing. There's all these guys. And, and yeah, I mean, I think Gaten's probably already on that list, but those guys tend to be the, the first place people look and, I mean, look, I even CJ and, and Collins were never on teams as good as this one. So it's it's going to yeah. be even more pressure. So, yeah, I think I I hope it doesn't happen. And I hope that Ishbia can let it ride. But we just have seen this before. And, and these guys aren't patient. They don't they don't tend to be patient, you know. Um, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, I I don't think I have anything more there it's just percolating in the back of my mind yeah <laughs> um what's your next one uh my next one is gonna be for all the people that just didn't watch the suns the last couple of years or last year and i think the headline is gonna be who knew book was this good of a point guard i think it's just gonna be just one of those things where we're just gonna be like oh duh like we're gonna be mad that people are saying it because duh but i think it's gonna yeah. be a lot of people finding out that book can play point and just the shock of it after we've seen that he can do it already is just going to be more annoying for us than anything. <laughs> yeah, I can see already there is going to be some article by like Tim McMahon <laughs> uh, midway through the year where it'll it'll start with an anecdote and then a quote from Jay Triano and then it'll be like, Booker has tapped back into these skills as he leads the Suns to the number one offense in the NBA and a, you know, franchise <laughs> record offensive rating or, you know, whatever it is, uh, you can already, you can already see it. And it'll be something that Suns fans get mad about on social media for like an hour in the morning when the article drops. So no one pays attention <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. That, that one is, that one's just right there. I might even be jumping the, or I might even be too late saying it's mid season. That could happen like November 15th <laughs> and, and it'll, it's like, I just, if an ESPN editor happened to be listening for some reason, like just assign the story now. It's right there yeah. for you. I was going to yeah. say after his, like he's going to have a game with like 13 assists or something, the article is going to get written. And then we get to just put this clip back out online again and say that yeah. we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Along those lines, I've already seen this article and like kind of podcast idea get used a lot, but it's going to come back, which is 
the next Bruce Brown. Like it's just such a, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just such easy content. And I think in m one of my other ones, a little bit less meat on the bone, but I still want to bring it up is Kata Bates Diop is the next Bruce Brown. And there'll be like <laughs> some cat guy breaking down, like why reminding everybody that, you know, over the apron teams can't retain these guys at the next, at the salary that they are going to, you know, merit. And then, why he might have to leave and the Suns did this to themselves with the Beal trade and blah, 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 blah. That, that one feels like it'll be right there too. The minute any Suns role player breaks out, everybody will need to tell NBA fans and Suns fans why they won't get to keep that guy. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. We're going to hear second apron so much. It's going to break our brains. <laughs> yeah. I've had, I've gone on a couple shows doing like preview stuff and whatever. And I'll say I will get frustrated. I already know having to correct the record on the fact that it really wasn't the Beal trade that set them up on the financial stuff. It was the Durant trade, and then the CBA got passed right afterward. But the Beal trade didn't increase their salary this year by like really all that much. Like, I don't know, five, seven million dollars. It was the yeah. Durant trade that did that. And people are going to, if Beal has a bad game, it's like, was he really worth them putting themselves in all that, you know, financial hell? And it's like, Please just pay attention. It's it's complicated, <laughs> but it's not that hard to understand. Like, yeah, I think just as, as for like any loss, like the bill trade is just going to come up, or us with ha dudes on minimums. That's another thing we're going to be like, see, you can't build a team with guys on minimum contracts. Like, we're going to probably hear that one a lot too. <laughs> Should they have kept their draft picks? Uh, trade deadline. If they don't look amazing, it's going to be well. The Suns can't improve their team because. You know, they they sacrifice the future and this is why super, you know, mega trades are bad and whatever. Yeah, it's uh, it's predictable. I hope that the best way, the thing that they can just do to eliminate all of it is just be really good all year. And that's why yeah. I started with the one I started with, because I kind of think they'll do that. And it might just yeah. be a season where they win like 50, 52 games and they're just cruising for the most part. And that noise is less of a thing, even if, you know, media people want to make it noise. Yeah, if Shannon Abbott averages 28 this season, then we're going to be in trouble. and We're going to look really bad. Shamit and Poole, yeah, just making everybody regret their decisions in Washington while they win, you know, 25 games or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> all right, I think that'll wrap us up for the week. We will have more for you next week. And then September, we will be back to daily and hopefully – busting out the 13 questions that will define the Phoenix Sun season, our preview series from a couple of years ago. Salute to number 13, which I hope I don't have to explain to anybody. That will be how we preview the season and then training camp, preseason, all that stuff. Hit subscribe or follow, get it in your feed. And I will talk to you guys next week. <laughs>